Hello everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the go-to place to learn about business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well. So please click the link in the description and click the join button below for more details. My name is Sapa, and today we're continuing to investigate novel financial contagion tests, and in particular, we are going to investigate the Fry McKibben and Xiao core Curtis's contagion test that has been developed in 2018 across another test that will be the topic of our next video. The co Curtis's test continues the tradition of higher moments contagion, or more precisely, higher co moment contagion, and is associated with the uh, relationships between means and skewnesses of various financial time series. Here we have got um, the US specific stock market index, which is S&P 500, uh, as well as the US government bond index, so treasury bonds, very short term and low risk instruments, daily from year end 2018 until year end 2020. And we'll uh, investigate whether there is financial contagion that is uh, changing relationships uh, in times of crisis or uncertainty on an example of the WHO uh, global pandemic announcement on the 11th of March 2020. For that, let's calculate daily returns for both stocks and bonds, applying it to both series and throughout the sample. Then we can have a look at uh, what is the cutoff point. Again, as the announcement is the 11th of March, our non-crisis period will be up until row 301, and our crisis period will be from row 302 until row 507, until the very end of our sample. Now we need to calculate our volatility and our subsample specific mean returns for both stocks and bonds. So for the volatility, we use the sample standard deviation and apply it until row 301. This is for stocks. For bonds, we can just drag it across. For the crisis volatility, we calculate the sample standard deviation from row 302 when the announcement uh, is uh, released until D507, which is the last uh, observation point in our sample. That's for stocks. For bonds, it's exactly uh, the same procedure. We can drag it across. This allows us, just as in previous tests, which are the Forbes and Rigobon correlation test and the uh, Fry et al. Uh, test, we need to uh, specify the market of origin for contagion. And here, it's quite natural. Uh, the stock market has an increased um, volatility uh, figure uh, in terms of non-crisis times and crisis times. So we'll treat the stock market as the market of origin of contagion. This is relevant for the uh, adjustments for heteroscedasticity in our test statistics. Again, just as in the Koskinus test, we'll use uh, heteroscedasticity adjusted correlation estimators for standard error construction. So this will be still relevant for the Curtis's test. Then we need to calculate uh, period specific and uh, asset specific means, so averages. Uh, the easiest way would be to copy the standard deviation formula across and change the function to average, both for the non-crisis and crisis periods, and apply it across to asset classes. For the sample size, we can count the returns for the non-crisis period, D3 to D301, and count uh, the crisis observations, D302 to D507. So we've got 299 non-crisis observations and 206 crisis observations. And finally, uh, before we can proceed to co curtises calculations, we need to calculate correlations. That would go into our uh, estimators of standard errors. So the correlation in um, calm non-crisis times well, it's the correlation between stock market returns in non-crisis times and bond returns in non-crisis times. So again, uh, until row 301, we plug in the returns in this function. And we can see that the correlation in non-crisis times is quite low, uh, less than uh, 1%. And for the crisis times, we can see that it slightly increases, which is exactly what you would expect for 
financial contagion episodes. We can see that the correlation has increased to uh, 0 0.0441. Uh, and finally, uh, before we can proceed with the formal testing, we actually need to calculate and interpret the co kurtesis figures and uh, try and test for their significance. The co kurtesis is co-movement between means and skewnesses of two different uh, financial time series. And we can test for two types of co kurtesis co kurtesis 1, 3, where we take the mean of the first variable, the mean of stocks, and the skewness of the second variable, so the skewness of bonds, so we'll see whether the skewness of bonds is associated with the returns of stocks, or we can also test whether skewness of stocks is associated with the returns of bonds. As we have already discussed in the co-skewness video, the uh, skewness uh, moment, uh, the skewness indicator is very important in crisis times, as if we um, find a negative uh, co-courtesis of uh, 1, 3 or 3, 1, that would tell us that uh, negative skewness in one asset uh, leads to a positive innovation into a return of another asset. So basically, there are flows uh, of capital from an asset that's experiencing uh, reduced or negative skewness into the other asset. Basically, that manifests the preference for skewness investors might have in times of crisis and uncertainty. Again, just as the co skewness um, test was um, explicitly identifying the safe haven properties of particular assets in crisis times, this would allow us to test for the relationship between returns and skewness across our two uh, asset classes. So for code kurtesis 1.3, we're testing for the relationship between uh, the mean of stocks and the skewness of bonds, as stocks go in first, bonds go in second in our particular uh, calculation here. So here for our non-crisis uh, co-courtesis, we can uh, calculate it as the average of, um, because uh, average as we have got one over t here, where t is the sample size. So we have got the average of uh, d mean stock return in non-crisis times, so d3, d301, minus the non-crisis stock specific mean, divided by non-crisis stock-specific volatility that completes the first um, component of the co kurtesis 1-3 formula. And then we'll need to add the cubed um, normalized um, abnormal return of bonds in non-crisis period. So that would be E3 to E301. This is the array of daily bond returns. We need to demean them, so sub subtract the non-crisis um, mean and cube as they go in um, as a cubed uh, factor here and divided by the non-crisis bond specific volatility cubed. And uh, finally, we need to adjust it by subtracting three correlation coefficients between stocks and bonds in non-crisis times. That gives us a non-crisis um, co-kurtesis 1.3 between stocks and bonds at minus uh, 0.3. That would mean that the um, returns, the average returns of stocks, is negatively related to the skewness of bonds. If bonds become more positively skewed, if there is more upside in bonds, uh, there is a flight of capital from stocks to bonds. If bonds become more negatively skewed, uh, then there is a flight of capital towards stocks, quite um, intuitively and uh, well aligned with the preference for skewness concept. Now for the Cocatesis 3 one in non-crisis times, we can simply copy this uh, function, paste it here, and cube the expressions related to stocks and remove the cubed terms for the um, expression specific to bonds. And we can see that Cocatesis 3 one is even higher than the one we observed uh, in the previous calculation. The skewness of stocks is even more drastically related to the average returns of bonds in non-crisis times. That can be associated with the fact that there is more time varying uh, upside and downside in stock markets and therefore the impact that this might have on uh, bond markets might be more pronounced as investors might monitor the skewness, so upside versus downside properties of the stock return distribution and make their investment decisions with regards to stock versus bond investment or uh, varying allocations into both um, more vigorously. 
for the coquetuses uh, for crisis times, we still need to subtract the three uh, times uh, correlation estimator. However, here we need to keep in mind that our crisis correlation has to be adjusted for heteroskedasticity. Uh, in this regard, we are still proceeding with the uh, approach uh, in Forbes and Rigobin. We have to divide our crisis times correlation by the adjustment factor. This is the square root of 1 plus the increase in variance um, for the market of origin uh, in crisis times compared to calm times. That would be volatility of stocks in crisis squared minus the variance of stocks not in crisis divided by the variance of stocks not in crisis. And that needs to be multiplied by 1 minus the unadjusted crisis correlation squared. That completes the adjustment, and we see that if we take into account heteroscedasticity, our adjusted correlation is quite a bit lower than the one we measured directly, whereas the non-crisis correlation can just be referred to from the cell we computed it. As here, we do not expect any volatility spikes uh, in particular during the non-crisis calm market period. So for the uh, coquetuses 1-3 uh, in crisis, we can drag this formula down that would correctly assign all of the relevant uh, means and volatilities. The only problem is that we have to refer to the adjusted uh, crisis times uh, correlation, and we have to refer to the correct crisis return arrays. So from 302 all the way to 507, all the way until the very end of the sample. And we can see that it correctly starts at the 11th of March, which is the the date of the WHO announcement that we care about as our uh, crisis uh, trigger. That calculates the uh, crisis time core courtesis. We can see that it has uh, quite a bit uh, reduced in terms of magnitude, but increased in terms of the value. For the 3 1 core courtesis, we can copy this formula across and change uh, the calculation. Again, cube all calculations related to stocks and remove the cube for the calculations related to bonds. And we see a very similar picture here. The co courtesis is reduced in terms of the magnitude, but increased in terms of the value. Now we need to test whether those differences that we observed from non-crisis time to the crisis period are statistically significant. For that, we need to calculate the chi-squared statistic, which is very similar to the one you have got for the Coskinus test, uh, and the only difference is that the standard error estimator is uh, um, differently specified. Uh, if you might know, if you might remember, for Coskinus you had four correlation squared plus two, for co we have got um, 18 correlation squared plus six. This is due to the uh, polynomial expansions of um, Lagrange multiplier functions, and the proof is provided in the original framework kibben xiao paper. So now, for the chi-squared stat, for the evaluation of significance of the co-cutesis 1-3 change from the non-crisis time to the crisis time, uh, whether there is uh, financial contagion in terms of uh, stock returns and the uh, skewness of bonds, we need to first calculate the change, so the uh, co courtesis in crisis minus the co courtesis in normal times, and then divided by the square root of first component is 18 times the uh, crisis time adjusted correlation squared, and I'll lock that because I might want to drag it around and have got the 3 1 co courtesis test uh, performed automatically, plus 6 divided by the crisis sample size, which is 206, and we can lock it as well for the same very reason. And we'll add 18 times the non-crisis correlation squared plus 6 divided by the non-crisis sample size, and I'll lock it again for the same very reason. And finally, after we have performed this calculation, we can uh, square the whole expression and again, quite fittingly, as we're using a chi-squared distribution. We have got a 1.54 chi-squared statistic, and as we drag it across, we'll get the same uh, chi-squared test, but applied to the 3-1 co courtesis change. And now, for the p-value, we can use a right-tailed chi-squared distribution, plug it in the chi-squared statistic, and 1 degrees of freedom. 
And that allows us to see that although there is no significant change in the 1,3 co-catalysis, the change in 3,1 co-catalysis is uh, quite substantial. This p-value is very small, and this chi squared statistic is very high. So how can it be interpreted in terms of uh, its financial implications? Well, there is no substantial change from crisis to non-crisis in terms of the relationship between stock returns and bond skewness. This relationship remains the same. Although the relationship between stock skewness and bond returns uh, does um, change quite substantially it is reduced. The propensity of investors to monitor the skewness of stocks and um, choose bonds if stock skewness becomes negative and uh, choose stocks if stock skewness becomes positive is reduced during crisis times. This would be the interpretation that quite naturally follows from the mathematics of the Kirk Curtis's financial contagion test. So we can see here that financial contagion is present and it's associated with the relationship between stock skewness and bond returns, and not between stock returns and bond skewness. This is another uh, feature that's very uh, important that allows you to make uh, distinguishing and quite specific uh, comments and conclusions about the nature of interrelations between distributions of returns for various asset classes, be it in terms of crisis or not. And that's all there is for the implementation of the co curtises financial contagion test as in Frama Kibben Xiao. In the next video, we'll investigate the co-volatility test developed in the same paper by the same authors. As for now, please leave a like on this video if you found helpful. In the comments below, I make this any first suggestion for videos you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and consider support us on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.